Welcome to Unit 3 that is focused on spirituality in healthcare. This unit aims to provide the students with the background knowledge to reflect on illness, care and spirituality within the medical humanities approach and with a specific focus on nursing. This unit will promote reflection by a set of uh, seven intertwin uh, questions that are arranged into three lectures. The first lectures deal with uh, experience of disease and uh, will answer two questions. The first one is uh, what happened when the disease appeared in our life and the second one is the meaning that we attribute to this transition. Get started with the first question. What happens when the disease appears in our life? It's not unlikely that people experience a time of crisis during their life. Such life crises may appear as a sudden major life event, such as a death of a loved one or a sudden acute illness, or uh, it may appear as a gradual transition, such as a progressive worsening from health to illness in people with chronic disease. Thus, a life crisis may be defined as any situation or circumstance that alters a person's life in a substantial way, thus implying some level of role change or adaptation. Features of the illness influence the experience of and answer to crisis. Illnesses with acute onset, such as a stroke or myocardial infection, entail a sudden dramatic change and require rapid mobilization of a crisis management skill with measurable measure adjustment comparison to a very short time frame. Instead, illnesses with gradual onset, such as dementia or Parkinson's disease, allow for a more protracted period of adjustment to the illness and time for adaptation. Chronic illness are indeed defined as permanently altered health state caused by a non-reversible pathological condition, which leaves residual disability, which can be corrected by a surgical procedure or cured by medical therapy. When facing a sudden change, people often find themselves strapped in and start up a frightening path. At this point, they perceive the experience as an unreal, emotionally challenging time. They are worried and describe thinking about the what if as particularly difficult. Several people are able to read the severity of the situation by body language. They may react differently to information and often desire to protect significant others from the uncertainty they are facing. Then they try to cope with the change in several ways. Among the most common strategies is staying busy. Finally, they have knowledge they reach a physical and emotional saturation point, recognize the impossibility to go back to the way it was before the change and adapt to a new normality. The natural history of chronic illness can be described within three time phases, including the crisis phase, the chronic phase, and the terminal phase. The crisis phase includes any symptomatic period before actual diagnosis and the initial period of readjustment and coping after the problem has been clarified through a diagnosis and initial treatment plan. This phase creates high stress and hunger with people who are unprepared for the changes. In this phase, practical illness-related tasks include learning to deal with incapacitation or other illness-related symptoms, learning to deal with the hospital environment and any disease-related treatment procedures, 
and establishing and maintaining workable relationship with the healthcare team. In addition, there are critical tasks for of a more general, something existential nature, including the creation of a meaning for the illness that maximizes a preservation of a sense of mastery and competence, the shift towards a position of acceptance of permanent change while maintaining a sense of continuity between its past and future and the development of flexibility towards future goals. The chronic phase is the time span between the initial diagnosis and the readjustment period and the third phase when issues of death and terminal illness predominate. It is an era that can be marked by progression or episodic change. In this sense, its meaning can be grasped by simply knowing the biological behavior of an illness. Rather, it is more a psychosocial construct that has been referred to as the long haul or a phase of day-to-day -day living with chronic illness. Often, the individual and family have come to grips psychologically and or organizationally with the permanent changes presented by a chronic illness and have devised an ongoing modus operandi. The ability to maintain the semblance of a normal life under the abnormal presence of a chronic illness is a key task of this period. The last or terminal phase includes the pre-terminal stage of an illness wherein the inevitability of death becomes apparent and dominates family life. This phase is distinguished by issues surrounding separation, death, grief, and the resolution of mourning. The three time phases illuminate critical transition points in the natural development in the natural phases of a chronic illness. Now, moving forward with the second question, which is the meaning that we attribute to the transition from health to disease? When people experience a life crisis, they often need to deal with suffering, fear, and guilt related to the life transition. If people face such life crisis by keeping a spiritual approach, spirituality may help to diminish or resolve these feelings or provide the strength to endure or face them by acting in several ways, including making sense of a challenging life event, finding meaning in the discovery of life purpose, promoting acceptance or of mystery or the beauty of not knowing, and the possibility that insight into this question might one day be realized. Thus, spirituality becomes an integral part of the experience of life crisis. When after a life crisis, people live a spiritual crisis and cannot make sense of the world around them, they may experience an existential vacuum which is associated with lack of meaning in life, despair, hopelessness, and feeling of uselessness. Thus, spiritual crisis emerges as a unique form of grieving or sense of loss, marked by a profound questioning of or lack of meaning in life, in which an individual reaches a turning point leading to a significant alteration in the way oneself and life is viewed. Transitions in the health status entail transitions in the goals of care, usually from curative goals to palliative goals. Transitions of care occur throughout one's life, despite they are particularly common during end-of-life period. The patient's situation may be assigned to one of three phases of care that are curative or restorative phase, palliative phase, and terminal phase, according to a realistic assessment of a probable outcomes of the medical treatment. Patients can move from one category to another during their illness trajectory, and goals are revised in the light of changes in medical conditions. 
This approach ensures that patients who are unlikely to benefit from medical treatment and at cure receive care appropriate to their condition and are not subjected to burdensome or non-beneficial treatments. The goals of care approach aims at changing the culture of medical decision making. In the traditional paternalistic approach to care, difficult decisions tend to be made in the heat of the moment by clinicians who do not know the patient and without patient or shared decision-making input. Instead, a goals of care approach requires an active engagement of patients and or their families in setting the goals of care with a shared decision-making process. A goals of care approach prompts treating teams to proactively determine treatment goals at a time when the assessment is likely to be of higher quality and discussions with the patient and family are easier to arrange. Thus, patients and their families become responsible for deciding about the desired care. 